So let's come back to you and uh, media malfeasance. Yes, so I first of all wanted to just start with a series of headlines and reports, particularly from the BBC and CNN. So first of all, what we're seeing happening very often recently is, for example, people are losing members of their families. There is no uh, description of who has actually killed them. So this headline from the BBC, Israel, Gaza, again, that framing of war is only Gaza. Londoner loses 42 family members. I looked at the article itself to see if within the article they said anything. In fact, they doubled down. A Palestinian woman, woman who lost 42 relatives in a Gaza bomb strike has said she wants to bring her surviving loved ones to safety in London. So even within that sentence, they don't uh, describe the bomb as coming from Israel. And then CNN, um, this was quite extraordinary. So the original headline that they put out, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm laughing because it's, it's just ridiculous. The video shows a man in military fatigue so not an IOF officer shooting mentally disabled Palestinian in the West Bank. Uh, the video is circulating if people want to watch it. They then changed the headline today, actually, when I went to find the article. The video shows Israeli soldier shooting mentally disabled Palestinian is in West Bank. And Dr. Mads Gilbert, who was uh, working as a surgeon in Gaza during the beginning of part of uh, the ongoing aggression by Israel. He put out, which I've done regularly on uh, X or Twitter, um, so he's saying basically the UN itself in its various flash reports, no names, not Israel. Um, and, and this is a very worrying trend that we're seeing. And then, of course, what do we see? We see that the BBC will, on the other side, very quickly run with a report based on I've read this article, and I have to say there is no photographic evidence. There is no uh, hard evidence. There is just testimony, and we'll come on to that later. But they've run with the uh, story, Hamas raped and mutilated women on the 7th of October, BBC hears. Interesting. So Max Blumenthal uh, did an investigation, particularly on one of the photos that's on a separate website claiming to be one of the rape victims. It turned out that it was an earlier photo, earlier than the 7th of October, of a Kurdish fighter that had, whose body had been defiled. That was on, uh, I think, a Japanese website. You can go to Max's tweet to, to take a look at the two uh, references that he makes there. But he also then writes a very good article in the last, uh, I think, yesterday, scandal-stained Israeli rescue group fuels October the 7th fabrications, including these rape reports. Now, interestingly, this group, let's have a look at who they are exactly. Um, but I just want to point out, if you go to the website, if, if you Google uh, Zaka Israel, it comes up as a search and rescue group. Now, I'm smiling, but of course, what does that remind me of? It reminds me of the White Helmets producing um, much of the propaganda to demonize and criminalize the Syrian government. Um, including the, the alleged chemical weapon attacks that have been roundly debunked, including by OPCW inspectors themselves. Um, so that immediately caught my interest. And then when we look at the, the propaganda that they're providing, for, for example, the US State Department, for Joe Biden, Tony Blinken, for the BBC, for CNN, it was founded by a serial rapist known as the Haredi Jeffrey Epstein. Israeli ultra-Orthodox rescue group Zaka is responsible for some of the most obscene post-October the 7th atrocity fabrications from beheaded babies to mass rape to a fetus cut from its mother, bearing in mind, of course, the terrorists that Israel um, backed in Syria did carry out these atrocities. Um, its rival, uh, United Hatzalah, has spun out bogus tales of babies baked in ovens as it closes in on a 50 million fundraising uh, goal. Then let's, let's look further at, at who they are. So their presence at the heart of a high-level rape investigation is fraught with irony. Until recently, wow. Israeli media coverage of the organization largely focused on gruesome sex crimes committed by its founder, ultra-Orthodox, Bigwig Yehuda Meshi Zahav, known among Jerusalem's Orthodox community as the Haredi Jeffrey Epstein, due to his well-documented penchant for raping young people of both sexes. 
Meshi Zahav's decades-long rampage of sexual abuse was undoubtedly known to Zaka staffers and only came to an end following um, his suicide. Brad Pierce, an independent scholar who published an extensive profile of Zaka's corruption in October 2023, so very recently, described the group as the most opaque and suspicious non-governmental organization I have ever investigated. So bear in mind, this is the group providing the evidence. Um, then, uh, as Max points out on Twitter, BBC's key voice here is May Golan, who led anti-black race riots in Tel Aviv before she was appointed Israel's Minister of Women's Empowerment. I'm proud to be a racist, Golan declared at one fascist rally she led. So let's play the actual part of the interview with the BBC and then Golan uh, at this rally. They were burned, they were without organs, they were butchered completely, they were slaughtered to the core. You had heads roaming around, you had breasts of women roaming around and, you know, I just wanted to focus a bit more on the, on the practicalities of gathering. <laughs> Make sure that you care about what women have gone through. Make sure you care about what women are now going through when they are abducted in Gaza. Um, and then let's have a look at the possibility of projection, of course. The, the instances of rape, particularly against, uh, this is all from Israeli media, by the way. This isn't from any kind of opposition media. Um, cigarette burns, beatings, attempted sexual assaults. Uh, settlers and soldiers abused Palestinians, particularly children. 20% increase in reported sexual assaults in Israeli army in 2016. A third of Israeli soldiers were sexually harassed in 2021 report. We are all sexually harassed in the Israeli army almost on a daily basis. I don't have time to go into the specifics about particularly the child rape and abuse uh, by the IOF forces against Palestinian child detainees, but it's available at the various uh, NGOs that cover this type of thing, like DCI Palestine. Thank you for that. 